Your Voice, Part 2 I was flabbergasted. Felt as if a bucket of icy water had just been thrown over me. I was dying on the inside. I had definitely messed up. I shuffled up and was at the door in two seconds flat. He called after me, but I did not turn around. I was determined to get the hell out of there. I got to our apartment and rushed straight to my room. My mom called after me, but I ignored her. I was not fit for public viewing at the moment because my cheeks were burning. I started to breathe heavily and hyperventilate. All I could think of was how I'd ruined everything. He was never going to talk to me again. I was 100% certain he had seen how aroused I was. I was deprived, which was why I had gotten hot and heavy over a mere hug. Yep, I was a disgrace and would gladly wear my crown as the king of disgrace. I couldn't sleep due to my anxiety and tossed and turned all night. I ended up abandoning the mission of sleeping and decided to go on my laptop instead. I played a few games with a few online friends who were still up. I felt as if I was going to explode due to anxiety at any moment. I wish that I had not quit my anxiety pills, otherwise they would have come in handy at that moment. I don't want to lie, I genuinely liked him but the chances that he liked me were very low. So then I decided to avoid him for as long as I could. That was not a good thing to do, because he was my friend, but what could I do? I did not want to face the rejection that I had been feeling all my life. Having him of all people tell me that he didn't like me was going to break me. I don't know when I fell asleep. I guess I gave in to exhaustion. I just remember waking and seeing that the light was filtering through my window. I felt a bit better than I did the previous day. Even though I felt as if I could not talk to him at that moment if I avoided him. Everything was going to be okay. That was until my door opened and he came in. My heart pounded in my chest as I wondered what the hell he was doing here so early in the morning. There went my plan to avoid him. Epic fail. He smiled mysteriously at me as he closed the door behind him. I leaned back against the headboard as I wondered what the heck he was doing here. I was feeling scared but also I felt a sense of wanting. A deep primal desire. I felt as if he came any closer I would do something that I would regret. What are you doing here? I signed to him. Nothing, he smirked mischievously. I don't believe you, I responded. He simply laughed. He made his way over and started to climb into bed. As he got closer to me, I felt as if I was going to explode from the tension that was in the room. He looked into my eyes with a very dark and mysterious look, and I shivered. He leaned in and kissed me. Gosh, it was so electric. I felt as if I was going to fly. I leaned in closer, the desire within me taking control. His body felt rock hard against mine. I arched my back as he kissed my neck, trailing soft kisses up and down it. Then his hand made his way down to my trousers and started to unbuckle my belt. I felt a wave of want wash over me. Then at that very moment, I felt a jolt. Something heavy had just been thrown at my head. I opened my eyes and saw my mom standing over me. It had been a dream. I was so ashamed. I have been dreaming all along. I hoped that my mom had not seen me doing anything strange in my sleep. Otherwise, that would have been extremely embarrassing. She was shouting something about me sleeping in too late and my room being disgustingly messy. I apologized and then I went to go get ready for the day. I washed my body, then I dressed up. I put on a pair of black jeans and a black t-shirt. When I went back into my room, it was spotless. That was my mom for you. She would always shout at me for making my room too messy and then tell me to clean it, but then she would end up cleaning the room herself every single time. I loved her so much. At that moment, my phone pinged with a message. I checked to see who it was, and it was a text from him. My heart pounded in my chest as I contemplated whether I should open the message or not. Curiosity gave in to fear, and I opened the message. Hey, had one too many to drink last night? When did you go home? I stared at the text message in disbelief. He had been too drunk to register the last few minutes of my visit. I felt so relieved now that I wouldn't have to avoid my friend, but there was also the issue of my growing feelings for him. I could not deny I really liked them and I did not know how I was going to tell him this. Last night was a close call. I did not want him to know about my feelings on a drunken night. I wanted to be sober when I told him, and I wanted to tell him everything that was in my heart, so I decided to text him back. It's okay, I understand. I hope that you're okay though. Wanna hang out later? He replied and said that he would be free later in the afternoon, so then I took that time to get some work done. I was so happy that it was nearly a month end because I would give myself a few days off and I was getting paid. Soon enough the afternoon rolled over and I had to go to his place. I was very nervous. My palms were sweating and my heart was beating so loudly I thought that everyone in the world could hear me. I knocked on his door. He opened the door and let me in. 
He had bought some hot dogs for us to eat. Then we ate him while chatting about random things. How much do you remember about last night? I signed to him. I remember that we talked a lot about our insecurities, but then I don't remember much. After that, it's a bit hazy. I just woke up this morning and I was sleeping on the floor, he said. I see. This is what I wanted to talk to you about. I hope you don't see me differently after. I'll tell you this. I'm a person who wears my heart on my sleeve. When I feel something, I always make sure to let it be known. He looked at me in confusion. What do you mean? He asked me. Well, it is very complicated, but I just wanted to tell you this because it's eating me up on the inside. Yesterday, you told me that my voice had to be heard. Well, I want to tell you what is on my mind. Okay, what is on your mind? He asked, smiling at me. I like you, I signed slowly. I want to make sure that he understood what I was saying. I did not feel as if I would have the courage to sign it again. He looked at me, gray eyes widened, with shock. Sorry, I do not understand what you mean. You like, like me? Yep, I like you as more than a friend. He got up at that very moment, and he looked very shocked at what I had said. I, I don't know how to react to this. I'm sorry, I thought we were just friends, he stammered. Yes, I thought that we could just be friends. I'm really sorry about this. If this seeing me inconveniences you in any way, I can leave your life. Lee, you are one of the smartest, kindest people that I know. I feel a connection to you as if you're my twin flame. I feel something for you, but I do not know what. I cannot promise you anything. I want you to find happiness with someone who can love you. So sorry that I cannot be that person, he said looking down. My heart sank to the bottom of my stomach as I registered what he was saying. I knew that he was going to say that. It has been a dark, self-fulfilling prophecy. I understand. I just need some time away from you so that I can process this. I hope that you understand, I sighed. I understand, he said. I really want to explore this with you, but I am scared. I hope that you figure out everything, I said as I got off the chair and made my way to the door. This always happened. Every time I fell for someone, they were not into me. Even if they did, there would be factors that would come into play that would ruin that relationship. I was sick and tired of feeling as if I was not enough. The one time that I found someone who accepted me, and he was not sure if he was gay. I just wanted to crawl into a hole and die. When I opened the door, I went straight to my mom's room, knocked on the door, and she opened it. It was her day off, so I was glad that it was. Otherwise, I was probably just going to cry myself into a puddle. I was still going to do that, but at least I would have her to comfort me. Her face showed worry when she saw me. She embraced me and sat me on her bed. What's wrong, she signed. I just started to cry. My body shook with sobs that I could not control. I felt as if everything had been a lie. This is what I got for being delusional. I did not deserve love. I would walk on this earth for the rest of my days without getting anyone who would love me. My hope was non-existent at that point. What is wrong? She repeated. So I explained everything to her. She listened without interrupting me. Somewhere along the line, I stopped crying. When I finished, she started to speak. My son, I remember giving birth to you. It was one of the best days of my life. The love that I had in my heart for you is so difficult to explain. I know that I don't speak about your father. When I held you, all the things that he had done to me evaporated because I had you in my arms. You were so small, but for the first time ever, I felt so much love. I was content to have you in my life. As you grew older, I found out that you could not speak. I was shattered. I wanted to do everything that I could to protect you. I felt as if I had failed. It took me a long time for me to figure out that it was what nature had intended. You were not less of a person because of your condition. You were brilliant and very kind-hearted. I'm sorry that things between you and Carrion are a bit complicated now. But just remember that there is always a rainbow after a rainy day. I had no idea how much I needed her words. I had found love and lost it in one go. On one hand, he had loved me without saying anything. On the other hand, he could not be with me because he was still figuring out things. The one time I found true love and I could not be with the person, I felt a bit better after my mom's pep talk. I hugged her and we stayed like that for a while. Over the next couple of days, I threw myself into forgetting him. I made sure that I spent as little time at our apartment as I could. He seemed to be around every corner. I could not escape him. I locked eyes with him several times and all the feelings came rushing back. He had touched me and left me wanting more. There was a change in me that I could not fathom. Suddenly, I was not shy or awkward in public. When my bullies called me names, I let them bounce off me. 
was no longer afraid. Despite things not working out between us, he had done so much for me. I was no longer afraid. I finally understood when he talked about finding my voice. My voice was how I expressed myself, how people registered me. I had been thinking that just speaking would mean that I had a voice, that I would be whole. Loving myself was what my voice was. Being confident to walk down the street without praying for an invisibility cloak was my voice. I refused to be put down by the bullies who had been tormenting me all over my life. I was not broken. I was whole. I was a person just like anybody else. My resentment for Kyrian started to fade away day by day. He might not have been able to be in a relationship with me, despite his feelings, but he had shown me one of the most important types of love. Love for oneself. One day, I was having some coffee at a local cafe with my friend Jose. Jose and I had met at a bookshop a few weeks ago, and we had hit it off. Jose did not know sign language, but that did not prevent us from communicating. Suddenly, someone called my name. I turned around and saw that it was Kyrian. I was puzzled as to what he was doing there of all places. I waved him over and he took a seat with us. Hey, hearing his voice for the first time was shocking. It felt familiar, yet brand new. Hi, I signed. Um, I'm going to ask the waitress if they have any cupcakes, Jose said. He was looking between me and Kyrian. He must have picked up on the tension. I missed you, he signed. I miss you too, I replied. I thought that by staying away from you, I could find that I really did not have feelings for you. This is all very confusing for me as well. I thought that I was straight all my life, he signed. And what did you discover then? I asked him. That I missed your smile, your scent, your intelligence, and everything about you. That I wanted to talk to you about world peace and video games. That I wanted to kiss you to within an inch of your life. That I do not want anyone else to be with you, he signed. I was shocked. Everything that I had wanted him to say was now being said. I had not lost him after all. Tears welled up in my eyes as the emotions crushed into my body. I was lost for words, so I did the one thing that I had been dying to do for a long time. I pulled him in and I kissed him. His lips were so soft, as soft as I had imagined. His body was warm against mine, making me feel safe and wanted. I was nearly engulfed in flames at that very moment. Someone cleared their throat and we pulled apart. That was when I remembered that we were in public. I blushed, looking down. Jose had just come back with three cupcakes. I took my pen and wrote in my notebook. Thanks for the cupcakes. This is Kyrian, the guy I told you about. Kyrian, my man. Nice to meet you. I am Jose, Lee's friend, he smiled. So the three of us had cupcakes and coffee at the cafe. I was feeling so content, better than I had felt in my life. I was holding the hand of the man who had done so much for me. And I had a friend who did not bully me or was impatient with me due to my disability. Nothing could ruin that moment. It was untainted. I found love in an unlikely place when I felt as I could never find anyone. You can too. You just believe and do not lose hope. Love comes in in all shapes and sizes at any time that it wants. When it comes, it will rearrange you from the inside out. And finally, the little parts of you will come together and form a whole. No matter how broken you think you are, the force that is love will heal you and wipe away all your tears. Love had done that for me. Who knows what the future holds for Kyrian and me, but I know that I will never be the same ever again. I will never think of myself as broken ever again. No one is broken. We're just waiting for the one that will complete us. Thank you for reading my story. The End Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to become part of our Rainbow Force and stay wholesome.